Okay, so to what I like to do is with this style of hair, you'll see that you've got this curl here and then you've got this little break on the underside of the hair. I like to fill that in to begin with. And then the same as here, you'll see you've got the curl on the top and then you've got this little break in the middle here. So and this helps to um, visualize what you're doing as you're breaking up all of these curls of hair. So I'm gonna work on this whole curl first. And I wanna keep it light because I wanna make the backside, the curl underneath, darker. So I've started with my E27, I'm gonna come with my E25 and I'm going to start flicking up at the bottom here towards my highlight. So if you see my colouring so far, I've got my highlight up the top here. So my highlight or my sun is coming from the top left and coming down. So I'm going to have mainly light hair on this side. So I'm going to now just start flicking up from the underside of this curl. And I'm going to come in now with my lightest colour and flip just into the top of this curl here. And I'm being rough, I'm not doing anything fancy at the moment. So I'm just laying down the colour. So I'm actually going to colour this whole section here. And then because it's going to be wet, I'm going to flick my E25 into it. Now I'm just going to turn it around so that I do better little tiny flicks when I'm flicking towards myself. Hopefully you can still see that okay. And so now I'm just going to do, hopefully my thumb doesn't get in the way, I'm just going to try and make sure it doesn't. So I'm just going to do these tiny little flicks up like that. Can you see okay guys? Is my internet connection really bad? Like is this really blurry for you guys? It's looking okay on my phone but I just have no idea. So now I'm just flicking, flicking up into that highlight here again. And do you see how I'm getting the flicks into that highlight, but you can still see the detail. All right, excellent. Thanks guys, I'm glad it's looking good. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I've got the basic look of this top one here. I'm gonna start working on this one on the bottom right here. I actually uh, I actually told uh, Jason that he had to uh, leave the room he wasn't allowed to use the internet that I needed all of the bandwidth. So he's gone off to hide inside like a good man should. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do uh, E27, which is my medium. And I'm going to go into those little areas again. Just going to go under here, start creating some depth under this bang. And then using E25, just going to color it again. And now, because this is such a small area, I'm just dabbing the ink. I'm not trying to do any flicks or anything, I'm allowing the ink to blend together and now I'm just going to use my E53 which is my lightest just on the end here because that is out in the light and then on the very bottom there I'm going to use my darkest which is E29 and I'll have all of this information when I put it up on the website. Mm. 
you see that I'm just being really really light to touch I'm not trying to do anything other than allow the inks to blend together so you need a good paper and you need to be very light because this is very small areas I mean even though I've printed her at quite a large size it's still some very small areas so if you are really dabbing your marker down you're going to get a great big blob you're not going to be able to get the difference or the gradient between the colors so there's another there's another little curl just under here so let's start with that and I don't want to put too many layers of ink down so I'm going to start directly with my E29 and just bring it in under her face and her ear here but what I want to do the trick here is I want to leave a line on the left hand side so I don't want to color right up to the black line because this is going to help separate the curl from the other um, curls in her hair so I'm just going to bring this like here and then I'm going to come in with my E27 and bring that down a little bit further and then I can use my lightest tone to go on that along that line there which is just pushing that ink as well so it's pushing that ink making a gradient and it helps to keep that separated from the other curls because in here there's another little piece so I'm just going to go in with the darkest and that's going to be the furthest away so later when I add the um, warm grey will even push that back further but I will show you that later and explain why I do that so then we're going to work on to the next one so I'm just going to turn this around a little bit so if I have found that if you work on each one separately you don't get quite so confused because these are like curls are all over the place for this style of image and it can really sort of be quite overwhelming when you're trying to uh, color all that hair so that was my darkest color again and now I'm going to jump to my E27 just blend towards my highlight that I'm creating and then again I'm going to come in with my lightest and just dab on that to push the ink back and then because it pushes the ink too much um, it sort of creates like a blotchy look on your darker shades so then I come in with my medium which is an E25 and you just flick into that highlight which gets rid of the blotchiness and gives you a whole nice new tone and see how that's looking okay so now I've just got this little tiny bit here so I'm just going to quickly do that so again I'm starting with my darkest I'm going to bring in my E25 and just go under here and bring it towards the highlight I've got my lightest so it doesn't matter what your blend is you don't have to have the perfect color family all you need to really worry about is having the last numbers darker what size would you recommend to print her in this one I've if you go to my uh, website which is makeitcrafty.com I've actually got this whole card, this whole card topper designed for you at the exact size. This is a regular size card which is 5.5 inches by 4.25 inches tall. So she is currently what, about 4 inches I guess. Um, and you can print this out as is and colour her and make a card with her. So um, what was I saying? Okay. I forget what I was saying but we'll move on <laughs> um, okay so I'm gonna start coloring this bit now 
and that is I've got my E25 and I'm going to start flicking up from the bottom so because I've got this larger area to work in I'm going to use my flick so that I can create texture I didn't need as much texture down here because these are smaller areas but so if you bring your texture into the larger areas then it doesn't matter about the ones that you're hiding at the back and thank you everyone for all of your hearts I really appreciate it and for sharing thank you for sharing with your other friends I need to work out what will be the best time to do this as well so afterwards we'll have a chat and decide if I should do this earlier or if I should do it like in my er my early mornings which would be um, I think like evenings for the US and or if I should do it yeah it's really difficult to work out because Whenever I'm doing something, there's someone who's asleep. <laughs> so, now I am just going to explain what I'm doing here. What I like to do in these bigger areas is leave a white line around the inside of the black line. So, um, this helps, as I was saying before, like I've done the, the highlight here, it helps to just break everything up. Even like I always, I religiously do it when I'm doing the no line coloring, but due to my experience with the no line coloring, I found that it actually works really well with uh, most um, coloring. Yes, I am going to be putting a high quality version on YouTube later. So I'm doing this um, obviously live, but. Uh, because I was worried about my internet connection and whether it would be good enough quality I'm also taking a live video with my video camera and I will upload that to uh, YouTube at a later date so and I was thinking to myself I needed to remember to actually read out the question before I answer it because it's going to sound very funny on YouTube <laughs> so hopefully I, uh, I'll get used to that so I'm going to have to try and remember to do that from now on so I'm currently using my E25 and I'm just extending these curls or the shading in my curls and now I've just come in with my lightest color and I'm just filling in all of the highlight areas. And now I'm going to add some texture. So I'm just going to turn her around so that it's easier for me to flick. And I'm going to use my E27. Hopefully you can see that there. Just gonna use my E27 and flick into that highlight. And then the same here. So I've just been asked, are the pen nibs the same on Copic Chow and Sketch? And yes, they are. The brush nib is the same for both styles of markers. The only difference with the Chow markers is they uh, cannot take as much ink. They're Obviously, they're round um, and you don't have the numbers on the end like you can see here. So those are the main differences. All the same inks. They've got the same the same nibs so yes uh, E25 I'm going to use just to extend that a little bit further and 
And you see how by leaving the gap between this top part of the curl and the curl that comes out, it really helps to make that look like it's come forward. Okay. So now I'm just going to flip a little bit up here. Right, so this little area here, I'm going to make this darker so that it's tucked away behind the curls. So I'm going to start with my E25 and just flick that up like so, fill that area. And before I do anything more, I'm going to start adding some texture to the top of her hair here. So I'm going to have my band of highlight come through the center here. So I'm going to use my E25 and towards and make it a jagged edge. Just like that. And then I'm going to use my E27 and just Make it a little bit darker on the edge here. Hopefully my thumb is not in the way. I have a tendency of wrapping my thumb right around when I'm trying to get to the very tip. So I'm just trying not to do that whilst you are watching. I remember in school I used to wrap my finger around my pen and the teacher would come along and Hit me over my knuckles. I'm not that old, not quite that old, but I used to get in trouble for doing that in grade four, I think it was. And as soon as you would do that, you'd get back onto your pencils and you wasn't allowed to use a pen again for the week or something. And yeah, it was quite, quite funny. But I haven't stopped doing it, so it didn't quite work. But so I've just got my lightest shade which is E53 and I'm just going to go towards the highlight and see how that's looking quite pretty now already just that little bit of texture and I'm just going to now use my E27 on the bottom side And just bring some more texture into that. Highlighted area. And then I'm going to bring it down again. And it's all about, when it comes to doing hair, it's all about adding another layer and another layer and another layer. So as long as you are light handed, and just carefully flick, you can keep adding layers and make your hair look awesome. So now, just here, because I want to push this back a little bit further, you can see how this highlight here, you can see how this highlight here is helping to bring this section of her hair forward and this part, how I've pushed it back, really helps to make it all stand out. But I want to push this back a little bit further. Um, Dawn, I am using E53 for the lightest shade. I am using the E27 for, oh wait, and then I'm using E25. Then I've got E27 and E29, but I'll have all the details when I upload the video. Um, the full resolution video um, to YouTube in a few days time. Um, the image is going to be available to download until the end of the weekend. So you can download her and save her and you'll be able to follow along on um, the YouTube at a later stage. Okay, so um, E29 and I want to just make this little section darker, so I'm just going to flick that up here. 
and just help to push that further back. And then I'm going to use my E25 to just take that a little bit further. This is a Make It Crafty uh, Digi Step Molly. So you can, she is available, the whole image is available from makeitcrafty.com. And I'm the owner of makeitcrafty.com, Zoe. Okay. Um, so I'm just now going to just do this last bit. And this is the last thing I'm going to do. Um, and which is, I will do this at another time because we've already gone 26 minutes and I wanted to try and keep this at 30 minutes so that you uh, don't get too bored. But I will um, continue to colour this at a later stage. If you want, I can do this again. I can wait and do another live session. Um, or I will just simply continue to colour it and you can watch it on YouTube. So you can vote and let me know what you think. So that was E25. And now I am coming in with my E29 and just making sure that I haven't got my thumb in the way. And again, I'm just doing the underside because I want the tops to be highlighted. And I'm just going to come straight in with my highlight on this one because these are such a small areas. Now I'm just going to, because that has pushed back, so I don't know, It's very you, you'll be able to see it later on um, YouTube, but it definitely um, starts to push back the colour. So you've got to come in, whenever you use your light colour, you've got to come back in over the top with um, one of your medium colours just to help get rid of that blotchy look. So I've just got my E25, and I'm just going to bring that dark on the underside here. And then carefully, just so carefully, sorry, got my fingers in the way again. Carefully flick that up without, like I am touching so lightly. If you're struggling with doing hair and fine flicks, I highly recommend sitting with your marker when you're talking on the phone or your board next to your computer and just practice doing very, very fine flicks. Can you see how fine my flicks are? They are so fine because I sit there and I try and get really, really good control of my marker tip. And this is the only way to do it. If you want to get good control, it's all about practice. All about practice. And one of the biggest tips that I can give you to try and do as well is to actually get your uh, marker and flick it and do a really long stroke. So you are just continuing that stroke and trying to get it as thin as you can by learning to understand exactly where your marker is going to hit the paper. You see how I'm doing that? And when you can do really, really nice fine flicks like this with your marker, you're going to do great t texture in your hair. Okay. There we go. That's doing fine flicks. <laughs> um, I am now going to... I just want to fix up that hair because that's looking pretty gross, that little finish bit there. Um, just uh, my E25. So I just want to tidy up the ends of this hair here. And I'm also just want to add a little bit more texture finer flicks here.
Molly, I have quite a few videos on um, my YouTube channel as well. So if you go to YouTube and, um, or if you just go to the Make It Crafty store, you'll see um, I've got a video section there. I've got, um, I should have a link to my YouTube there as well. Um, and I've got lots of coloring videos there. Plus, I do also, I have written quite a few coloring um, ebooks, which include all the images and things like that as well. So with all step-by-step -step photo instructions and that. So um, if you're interested, um, have a look at the website and it's got all that there. Um, okay, so the one thing that I wanted to finish off before I go is to explain to you about using greys. And because I'm using a brown, I'm going to use a warm grey um, over the top. And I think I'm going to use W9 and W7. And the reason that I use a grey is because I've used all of the same tones on her hair. And what it does is it creates all the same level. So it's still, even though it appears to look like I've got some highlights there, which helps to um, you know, bring it out, by having... Uh, let me try and work out how I'm going to say this. By having the same tone all the way through, it still has a tendency to look flat. So when you add a grey tone over the top, it helps to push that element further back. So I'm going to use my W7 and I'm going to start by pushing back the um, areas that I want to um, have that are behind her head if we want to think of it that way. So I'm just going to go into the darker sections first and this will help separate the elements from the elements above. I'm just pushing that back and I'm going to push it back under her arm here and across the bottom. Thank you so much for all of the hearts. And so I'm just dabbing, so I'm not like doing anything special, just dabbing the ink into the areas that I am trying to darken. And I'm going to do the same just in this area here. Now another thing that can happen when you start adding more and more layers of ink is you can start to oversaturate the paper and it will become sticky. And what I tend to do is if I've got a sticky part, and it's probably not the best thing to do, but I'll just grab my finger and pick it up on my finger just to make sure that it's not still sticking there. And then I try not to put too much more ink on top of that. So now I'm just going to use my W9 to add a little bit more depth in some of these areas. And do you see how already that has made a huge difference in pushing those elements of her hair further back. Now to help even further, now that I have that darker shade, I can get my E25 and where I've got these highlights here, I'm going to actually push them back by putting my E25 over the top because it really doesn't need a highlight there and it's helping to stop you seeing that this one is actually closer to us. And that's a great thing when you start adding your darker shades you can go oh I can go a little bit darker here and I can go a little bit darker here. You can start building it up even further. It does require patience, but it is relaxing, so it's worth it. I haven't got them on the blog yet, but when I upload the uh, video, because I'm taking a high definition video as well, when I upload the video, I will um, have all of the colors listed. But essentially all you need is a light brown, a medium brown, a medium dark and a dark brown and some uh, greys that I'm using at the moment. 
So I think I will leave it there. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope that some of you were able to colour. I think I just bumped the table. I'm sorry about that. And um, if you think I should do this again, let me know. 